Last week, myself and my friends got together, flexed our creative muscles, and drew some stuff. What sort of stuff? Well, we took some stills from Dragon Ball Super and changed the style too. Dragon Ball Z. All right, so just like last time, myself and my friends, Trev, Anime AJ, and Editor San will be cycling through some of the most iconic stills from the series and, well, transforming them into one of Dragon Ball Z's various art styles. So, who's drawn first? Anime AJ. The first drawing on the chopping block is the Super Saiyan God debut from episode 9 of the Dragon Ball Super series. The God form is an awkward one to transform back into the days of old. It's a simple design with slim features and rare eye design. You can't simply bulk it up and add loads of shading because that'll make it look wrong, which is why, although incredibly well drawn, some of the God drawings in Dragon Ball Super Broly weren't quite in line with Toriyama's design philosophy for this form. To try and avoid this, Eiji decided to try and channel an icon of the industry's style instead. Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru. Nakatsuru is one of the longest standing animators in the series, working on pretty much every single iteration of the series, including Battle of Gods and Super, and serving as a character designer for the Boo arc and GT. His style at the time was very ahead of its time, which lends itself well to the modern form's designs while also maintaining that classic feel with its approach to shading and hair shapes. The original piece of artwork from Dragon Ball Super is fine enough and largely adheres to Super's model sheets drawn by Tadayoshi Yamamuro. These sheets are effectively the guidelines animators are expected to adhere to when drawing the characters. However, regrettably, it's those very character sheets that many people, including us, have taken issue with over the years. But in this drawing AJ's working on, it's clear he's after fixing the various issues with the prior design by coming up with an interesting compromise and injecting some life back into it. And once we apply the filter, the classic effect is achieved perfectly. Looking like something straight out of the Boo arc matches the Super Saiyan God in all of its glory. And continuing this momentum into the Resurrection F arc comes... AJ again. Something you might notice about this still is that it doesn't actually come from the Dragon Ball Super TV show, but instead from the Resurrection F film from 2015. This is really only because the Resurrection F arc of the TV series melted and doesn't exactly represent the intended style. Again, much like the last video, we're not redrawing these pieces to necessarily fix anything. We're simply interested in highlighting the differences between the two eras and to give you insight into where Super's approach could have made changes to evoke the aesthetics of old. This particular sequence comes from Yuki Hayashi, who animated part of the spectacular Gogeta fight in Dragon Ball Super Broly, sporting incredible designs that are a far cry from what's on display here. This is because Nohiro Shintani chose not to correct artwork, while Hayashi's contribution in the Frieza film was totally redrawn by Tadayoshi Yamamuro, much like every frame on that film, by the way. AJ, on the other hand, has decided to take a different approach, once again rolling with Nakatsuru's style for the very same reasons found in the Super Saiyan God example. Much like Goku Black last week, trying to deal with modern, bright, and glowy forms while maintaining that classic look is incredibly hard. Those kinds of heavily processed aesthetics didn't really exist back in the day, so although the drawing is a perfectly classic rendition that honors Nakatsuru very well, the final results don't quite tickle the same nostalgic part of our brains like the others have done. At least to us. But we'll let you decide. Let us know down below. Once again, using his trusty Photoshop skills, AJ's transformed this still into an approximation of what Dragon Ball Z may have offered this form back in the day. Now that we have Battle of Gods and Resurrection F out of the way, it's time to start diving into some new characters. And tackling our next drawing is... Trev. It will be the case in some of the drawings within this video that only minute alterations will be needed on a given illustration, with the majority of the noticeable changes on those drawings coming by way of the compositing courtesy of AJ and his filters. But this is not one of those drawings. From the ground up, the very anatomical and artistic philosophy in this drawing needed to be reworked to grant the piece a more refined and classic feel. As mentioned in the prior video, the more modern additions to the series, Beerus, Whis, Kaba, Cauliflower, etc., are a little on the scrawny side, although there are exceptions Akira Toriyama has largely moved away from the bulky designs seen in the Saiyan and Frieza sagas. Now, as noted last week, this isn't a complaint, but just another of the numerous changes Toriyama's style has seen over the years. Thankfully, this offers a unique opportunity for the likes of Kaba, a character we identified as perfect for this sort of style shift. Trev is elected to take reference from the likes of Teen Gohan from the Cell Saga while implementing his older Yamamoro art style he's so adept at mimicking. Bulking up the body, shrinking the head, and adding some life to the clothes are just some of the changes on an illustrative level to this piece. The most intense changes, however, come in the way of the color design, throwing out the colors from the super iteration and breathing new life into the piece with a period-appropriate palette. All that's left now is to apply the filter and... There you have it. Buff Boy Kaba complete with DBZ aesthetics. Great job, Trev. Next up for drawing... 
Trev once more. As soon as Frost was introduced in episode 32, I knew at some stage in my life our two paths would be drawn together in this fashion. Pun absolutely intended. And given that I got to give his main form the old school treatment in the last video, I figured it was only fair that Trev got to try his hand at this incarnation of the character in a style that, while both brilliant and iconic, is deceptively difficult to pull off effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Masaki Sato section of this video. If you don't know about this Legend of the Dragon Ball industry, then sit tight because this is my personal favorite style in all of the Dragon Ball series. For many people, Minoru Maeda is the name that comes to mind when thinking of the classic Saiyan and Frieza arcs of Z. But contrary to popular belief, most of the spectacular drawings people attribute to him actually come from Masaki Sato, who worked under him at Studio Junio. Which means, thankfully, Trev has some terrific references of Frieza drawn by Sato himself. Incredibly detailed collarbones, necks, and thick, rich line work are just some of the many any characteristics associated with this man and Trev absolutely annihilated this challenge. Lifting the colors from my piece last week and there you have it. All that's left now is AJ's filter. This is an incredibly impressive piece, I think. It looks not only authentic, but offers the character a subdued menace I thought he lacked in the Super Series. It's one of the many aspects of Sato's style I adore, and we are absolutely not done with this style yet. Next up, me. Episode 47 is one of the most impressive episodes in Super, I think, with one of the strongest endings to a single episode I've ever seen. And while it's iconic and perfectly on model, it's also about as modern Yamamura a drawing can get without being Super Dragon Ball heroes. And with me currently having a craving only Masaki Sato can satisfy, I knew I had some extra creative energy to expel on giving Goku Black, everyone's favorite edge boy, the Masaki Sato treatment. Masaki Sato is responsible for some of the best scenes in the series, as I mentioned in the last drawing and thankfully his work on the third Z movie meant I had a million amazing references of Turles to draw from for this other evil Goku design. But, and this is the big but, I find this style incredibly difficult to draw. I combed through this series meticulously looking for references like a kid with a Where's Wally book. And the footage that you're looking at now reflects that very process. At numerous times I think I'm finished only to go back and change things drastically the next day. This piece took me three days of going back and forth trying to iron down the style making slight changes like with the face and massive ones with the clothes. This piece was in every meaning of the phrase a team effort and I honestly couldn't have reached this point without AJ, Trev or Editor San. I'm very happy with how this turned out and I even added some fire effects in the style of the Tree of Might film for added authenticity. I hope you like it. And with the filter courtesy of AJ, it really and truly looks like something that came out decades ago. I wish I could say that this was the toughest drawing I attempted in this video, but it was actually the easiest. Time for me to rest now though. Next up, Editor San. Introduced in episode 52 of Dragon Ball Super, Zamas might seem like a character prototypical of the Super series, but in reality, he actually follows relatively closely in line with the same sort of design philosophy the other Kais in Z did also, canon or otherwise. Therefore, Zamas is an example of a design that only required minor alterations to bring it into a classic style and aesthetic. The body itself needed a greater level of detail first and foremost, with the hands receiving most of the focus, but by far what needed the most attention was the face. The existing face is something that was very super, for lack of a better term, and as such, we need to dbz it. Granting Zamas a slimmer, more pronounced jaw, sharper features, and a host of shading changes, it took our combined efforts to get the face just right, but eventually we all settled on a look we were happy with that to my eye seems like something you'd see in the Android arc. The body is full of lovely loose folds and angles evocative of the Saiyan arc, while the face has the robust blockiness that would come into play in the later Cell and early Boo era. It's an awesome hybrid, and all we gotta do now is add the filter. Looks perfect. Fittingly evocative of the classic era of Dragon Ball Z. Next up, Trev. Yeah, but first a quick word from our sponsor. Super Saiyan Rose, while I find it difficult to understand narratively, it's still damn cool to look at. Despite tackling it in the last video, we thought it would be fun to try it again since AJ wasn't super happy with the aura and Keisuke Masunaga's style that he replicated isn't exactly the most representative of what Dragon Ball looked like on a regular basis. In response, we've decided to fall back on that classic Tadayoshi Yamamuro style. Given this modern iteration of the character is from the very same animator, we thought it would be interesting to see what the character might look like if we picked the same man again, but 
rewound his style back in time to the Boo arc. After following a massively successful stint in his debut effort as a character designer for the first Broly film, Yamamoro later replaced Minoru Maeda as the character designer for all the subsequent Dragon Ball Z movies. Gone were the rougher, more rugged features associated with the Saiyan, Frieza, and Cell sagas, instead replaced by a softer, more contemporary approach that many today associate with Dragon Ball Z as its defining aesthetic. And when it comes to this drawing, the style being attempted is very much Trev's bread and butter as an artist. I'm convinced he could produce stuff like this in his sleep, and he pretty much does it with this right here. Amazing work, Trev. And with the filter... <laughs> It looks amazingly authentic for the time period attempted. And I think we actually nailed the aura this time. But no time to waste. Next up is... <laughs> Editor San. No one does self-love quite like Zamas. No matter what form he's in, whether that be the regular green form, Goku, or indeed the sky. And tackling his final piece in this video, we get to see a reimagining of the fabled hug between self-proclaimed gods. One of the many requests we received in the last video was to tackle characters like Beerus, Whis, Jiren, etc. The thing is, there's not a whole lot you can do with those designs to make them look, quote, classic. We can add some extra shading, much like Yuya Takahashi did in the Tournament of Power, but at the end of the day, it would very much be like slapping an old coat of paint on and calling it a day. Whereas with this piece, it very much offers us something to work with. And work with it, he most definitely did. Applying the same colors he used in the prior Zamas illustration, we get a nice reimagining of this bromance. And with the filter, it looks even better. A love that transcends both time and style, apparently. Next up... Me! Tackling something a little more ambitious than I first anticipated. Episode 66 for many is one of the best looking episodes in the series and nestled within it sits this ethereal and dreamlike illustration. And I say dreamlike because in reality it makes absolutely no sense. But who cares because it looks awesome. Coming to us courtesy of legendary mech animator Ken Otsuka, the scene and indeed the drawing in question is very polished and pretty. So let's try to do some weird stylistic stuff to it. Tadayoshi Yamamoro is a name that's been thrown around a lot during this video. Everything from his less than stellar antics as a character designer for Dragon Ball Super all the way to his critically acclaimed approach with the first Broly movie and Boo Arc's material. But something many people don't give him credit for are the skills he honed long before he first came into the spotlight during these eras. You see, Tadayoshi Yamamoro didn't just show up randomly as a movie character designer for the series and chief animation director for the Boo Arc, but instead cut his teeth in the series for many, many years as an in-between artist and eventually key animator on the OG Dragon Ball series. But it wasn't until Namek that he really started to come to life, bringing us scenes like Goku's Kaioken x 20, which is maybe my personal favorite scene in the series. It was here his work was recognized and he was quickly promoted to assistant animation director before totally overtaking his superior's position once the android arc rolled around. While many might prefer his stuff in the Boo Saga, my favorite version of his style can be seen during Goku and Trunks' first meeting right after Frieza gets the old slicey slice. I find the shapes used here to be really interesting, with the way he would shade under the cheekbones to be specifically unique and pleasing to me. So this specific era of Yamamura was what I decided on trying to mimic. Also, I may or may not have chosen this style first and foremost because of the hair Trunks brandishes within it. This style of hair wasn't long for this world, but it was, in my opinion, the very peak of Dragon Ball hair. And while I know it's not Super Saiyan Rage hair, you guys did get that last week, so this one's for me. With this piece, the biggest challenge personally was born out of what way I should try to communicate the Spirit Bomb's sword. The Spirit Bomb was never depicted as a man-made weapon in the series before, and more often than not, just a ball of light. And in the end, the presentation I settled on was is indeed that of compromise, loosely based on the way Krillin holds the bomb during the Saiyan arc. It's difficult to make something that wasn't present in the original series look classic when it itself is indeed a modern creation or idea. With that said, however, the colors and shading were what I was most happy with this piece concerning, and I think I just about managed to get Tadayoshi Yamamoro's early Android arc style down in the end. All it needs now is that famous AJ treatment and... <laughs> I was very happy with how this final piece turned out. And the backgrounds chosen by AJ really brought the scene to life. Next up, Trev with his final drawing. The final desperate but powerful push to eliminate Jiren at the end of Dragon Ball Super's Tournament of Power and its final episode is by every measure an iconic image. Originally animated by Yuya Takahashi, this sequence was redrawn by Yamamoro himself and it's one that will be remembered for a long time to come. And it's used even in promo art to this day, redrawn by Yam himself twice, bringing him up to having drawn this image a total of three times now. And while the changes made stylistically won't be enormous here, I think this serves to highlight quite elegantly where Yamamoro 
Kimuro's style has changed over the years, or more specifically where they've not changed that much at all. And to show just how strong an effect the lighting and colors chosen in a scene can serve to devalue the artwork present. A particular issue we all had with the original piece from Super specifically was how blown out the brightness from the auras were. This post-processing issue has been prevalent throughout Super's run, reaching a fever pitch during the Tournament of Power, wherein we could hardly see what was going on in some scenarios. Vegeta's power up and Goku's Ultra Instinct specifically spring to mind in this instance. And so with this piece, we wanted to ensure that there was indeed brightness, but not so much that it would otherwise obstruct the original drawing. And I think Trev achieved that. And with the filter, we get an idea of what this scene might have looked like if it was given the classic treatment back in the day. Next up, and with the final drawing, me. Goku and Frieza's team up in the last episode was for me not only a highlight of the Super series, but was perhaps one of the only times in the series where I felt like it had elevated the material that came before. Growing up, the Frieza and Goku fight in Dragon Ball Z was one that I honestly fell in love with instantly. And during that material, I came to learn that one man's style stands out over all the others. And that man is Masahiro Shimanuki. He's one of the longest standing animators in the entire series and even contributed his own animation in the very episode this image was taken from in Super. Going into this video, I wanted to try and tackle three distinct styles. With Goku Black, I tried to go for Masaki Sato. With Future Trunks, I aimed for more of a classic Yamamuro style. But for this one, while I don't think it's the most iconic or polished, I think there's no style more fitting for this occasion than Masahiro Shimanukis. The style that very much defined the very first time Goku and Frieza fought will now be attempted by me to depict their final moments fighting alongside each other. And let me tell you, this one was an absolute nightmare. On top of there being two characters for me to draw, I had to do so in a style I'd never attempted before. And littered throughout these drawing recordings are my trial and error processes. At numerous times, I was consulting friends, starting over and tweaking different aspects of this drawing to try and get as close to the style as I could, to try and make the characters look like they were during their first fight's opening moments. With this piece, I found myself drawing into the early hours of the morning, and in the end, I think it turned out quite faithful to Shimanuki's old style. And with the filters added, I can safely say that I'm very happy with how it turned out. In the end, I couldn't have done this once again without Trev, Anime AJ, and Editor San. Links to all their socials are in the description, so if you haven't checked them out, I highly encourage you to do so right now. Making these videos was incredibly fun, and I hope you had some fun and maybe learned something here and there too. As always, I've been Tully Not Mark. I'll see you all next week, and thank you so much for watching.